Yeah, how how's it been going? Well, it's a uh, it's a a uh, time of uh, massive uncertainty, of course, and that's John, my dad. For him, this pandemic has brought work to a sudden stop. Uh, I also guess that it's going to be kind of a work stoppage for me for a, maybe a year. And with the routine of a regular workday gone, he's got plenty of time to sit with old anxieties. Retirement was uh, always something that was in the distant uh, horizon uh, for, for me and for us your mom and I, and um, it's only receded further out. Uh, if you're not occupied with the immediate health scare, your anxieties right now might be similar to my dad's. Worries about retirement, how to make rent, or where to find a job after graduation. And maybe those anxieties are paired with other sorts of looming anxieties, climate change, or our future in general. Whatever the case, this pandemic is forcing us, all at once, to face our fears. And hopefully, if there is a silver lining here, positioning us to do something about them. There's an opportunity for just kind of rethinking the way our country or our world does things. And hopefully, things improve for the better. It could go the other way. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but how do we go about creating change for the better? That's the key word. It's imagining. You know? That's Michael Goldman, professor in sociology and global studies at the University of Minnesota. You really can't bring about change until you can imagine what the change would look like. And that change, in a sense, is what I think some people are, or many people, are thinking about. If imagining a better world is an essential first step, Professor Goldman teaches that from health care to housing to climate change, changing one central principle can lead us to a world where all these issues are addressed together. So degrowth is all about not being hostage to the economy and the will of the economy, and in that sense, the will of corporations. And instead, put society in the center and ask, well, what kind of economy do we want, do we need? Making society the priority as opposed to the economy is a simple shift, but one that, if implemented, would reshape our everyday lives dramatically. Stuck in our regular day-to-day -day routines, it'd usually be pretty hard to imagine a kind of world which puts our needs at its center. But quarantine has put nearly all of us worldwide into a kind of altered reality, one that, at least in some areas, values health and human life over work and productivity, making it less of a stretch to imagine a world completely rebuilt with our wellness in mind. Right now, you know, we, we don't go out, well, hopefully, we don't go out that much. We only buy what's necessary. And now we're starting to exchange recipes. And we're starting to look deep into our pantry and say, okay, well, how do we make that bean soup that can last for three days and be nutritious and not be so wasteful, you know? So we're, we're, the imagination, I think, comes from the material experience of, of, of fear, but also sacrifice and spending time together. How do we make do in this crisis? So the crisis becomes an opportunity, and I think the opportunity gets us to, to imagine. Imagine how our relationship to work would change if we rebuilt the economy to best serve society. Like under quarantine, everything would need to be valued based on how essential it is to our lives and well-being. For essential workers, this means work continuing as normal, if not increasing. Because daycares and school is canceled, so they have to be home with their kids and stuff. But other than that, everything's running like full, full scale. David Abramson is one of these essential workers at Ward Manufacturing, a company in Illinois that produces small metal parts and has seen an increase in business since quarantine began. Really, shit was ramping up before it like really hit the fan in the U.S. at least. Because um, nice. I don't think we were expecting it to hit the fan here. So we got, we got one real big high volume job that used to be made in Italy and is going to be made here. And we got two jobs coming in that are also very high volume. Uh, that used to be made in China, and both of those are being built right now. Uh -huh. Along with this possible increase in local production of essential goods, essential social workers would become a priority in a society-centered world as well. So again, you know, if, if, if teachers are paid, uh, you know, like doctors, but doctors were paid like teachers, right, and housing was cheap and care was cheap, then you could see that a lot of our needs are being met just through that little circuit. But of course, for people considered non-essential workers, like my dad, quarantine means little to no work. 
and transitioning to a world with society at its center could mean something similar. Um, so if this was a picture of the future, uh, a future degrowth world, uh, I haven't transitioned mentally. Uh, it's more stressful. As Professor Goldman explains, when work subtracts from our relationships, working less is not necessarily a bad thing. So you can see that kind of obsession and requirement to get enough income to live and to pay for health care, pay for schooling, drives us away from relationships. This is a very you know, anti-social type of economy. Um, many people have three jobs. How can you take care of your children, your parents, your elderly, elderly or have fun, <laughs> live life? So I've never weighed more than I do now. While my dad has had more time to cook fancy meals and hang out with my brothers during quarantine, without a backup plan, it's been hard to enjoy the time off. I think if there were a uh, functioning degrowth plan, there'd have to be some comfort in or acceptance in a, uh, a future with maybe less worries about what's going to happen when I get old or uh, who's going to fund my kid's education. The idea of a better world with fewer anxieties and risk of crises is, of course, appealing. I would totally embrace that. I'm not embracing it right now. <laughs> All I have now is the anxiety of the future and, uh, you know, trying to res resuscitate the normal world. Talk to organizations that already exist in town. For now, it's important to imagine a better world and take action where we can, strengthening community on the local level in our day to day lives and supporting local organizations with a common vision. Most importantly, stay busy and don't let those anxieties overwhelm. I'm staying busy. That's good.